And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Uteranus, which was a request from Marcos via Patreon. So thanks, Marcos. The name means feathered tyrant, and it was a tyrannosauroid that lived in the Cretaceous in what is now northeastern China. It's the largest known dinosaur with direct evidence of feathers. Yeah, it's super awesome. Mm -hmm. There's only one species, though. It's Uteranus hualai. And the species name means beautiful in Mandarin and refers to the beauty of the feathers. Ooh. <laughs> it was described in 2012 by Xu Xing and others. And there's three nearly complete specimens, an adult, a subadult, and juvenile that were found. And they all came from one quarry in Liaoning Province, China. The largest specimen is the holotype and consists of a nearly complete skeleton with a skull. The juvenile is estimated to be eight years younger than the adult, the holotype. And the holotype was 30 feet or 9 meters long and weighed about 3,100 pounds or 1,400 kilograms. As Uteranus grew, its skull got deeper and more robust, and its lower legs, feet, ilia, and forelimbs became relatively smaller. It was a bipedal predator. The adult and subadult had these wavy crests on their snouts, which were probably for display. The fact that an adult was found with a subadult and juvenile has made some people wonder if Uteranus hunted in packs, but it's hard to know for sure. Yeah, you could always think maybe it's just one family or a coincidence. Yeah, exactly. The preserved feathers on Uteranus were about 8 inches or 20 centimeters long and filamentous, and the feathers covered multiple parts of the body. It was on the pelvis and foot of the holotype, and then the subadult had feathers on the tail, and the juvenile had filaments on the neck and upper arm. So, based on this, it's possible that feathers covered its whole body. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be. And if you look at a lot of depictions of Uteranus, it often is covered completely mm -hmm. in feathers. And they come up with all sorts of crazy color swarm too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've seen red a lot. So these feathers may have helped regulate their body temperature, or the feathers may have only been where they were found on the bodies and used for display. It's hard to know for sure. Uteranus, however, lived in a climate that was about 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, so the feathers may have helped keep it warm. The first known feathered tyrannosaur was Dilong, named in 2004, and then since then, other feathered dinosaurs have been found, and Uteranus is 40 times heavier <laughs> than the previous largest known feathered dinosaur, Bapiosaurus, which is a therizinosaur. There's a feathered Therizinosaur. We got to talk about that one of these days. <laughs> There's a lot we have to talk about. We have like 50 dinosaur requests right Just now. Just in case Therizinosaurus weren't weird enough, you got to throw some feathers on it. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's true. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but back to Uteranus. So Uteranus <laughs> is considered to be a basal Tyrannosauroid, and because it had feathers, that means it's possible that later Tyrannosaurids, even as large adults, may have had feathers. But late Cretaceous tyrannosaurids like Gorgosaurus, Tarbosaurus, Tyrannosaurus had scales on parts of the body where Uteranus had feathers, so it's also possible that scales evolved secondarily. Most T. rex skeletons were found in sandstone or siltstone, which are too coarse to preserve feathers. So it's also possible maybe T. rex had feathers and we just haven't found the specimen with preserved feathers yet. Hmm. Uh, Uteranus was found in fine sediments which is partially why we found the feathers. Uteranus had three fingers on its hand, which is unlike the two-fingered Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus, and it was missing a specially adapted middle toe that helped support its weight, which is what makes it a basal Tyrannosauroid. It's part of the family Proceratosauridae because a 2016 study found Uteranus to be more basal than Dilong. If you want, you can see Uteranus in the Land Before Time 14, Journey <laughs> of the Brave, two of them are sharp tooth opponents. I would recommend against it. I don't know. Maybe one day we'll watch it. Oh, man. We could do a whole podcast series on the different Land Before Time movies. Well, I was just thinking like movie marathon. That's so Spend many. A weekend. Maybe that's too much. I watched the first one, and first I think I saw great. part of the second one and was very disappointed. But you, you've you seen like at least the first five, right? I don't remember. I remember you telling me they're all bad except for the first one. Well, the first one's amazing. The second one was okay, and then it went downhill. Okay. I saw somebody on Reddit the other day saying like the first five or six are pretty good, and then they go bad. So I guess it just depends on how much you like that style, and if you well, really a, like the new dinosaurs it's they introduced. It's a totally different style from the first one. Yeah, the first one's pretty dark. Yeah. And I think the later ones are a little more cheerful. Well, 
they become sing-alongs. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like sing-alongs when I was a kid. I might be okay with it now, though. I don't remember any song being that great. We'll have to watch it. Maybe not number 14, but... <laughs> I don't know. I think if you're going to watch more than three, you might as well watch them all. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> what compare. do you do for the next 28 hours? <laughs> well, they're kids' movies, so they're under an hour. Are they? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So maybe only like 15 hours then. Yeah. Very good. Yeah.